everyone, and welcome to another episode of Growing Kentucky's Leaders. I am one of your hosts, Sheldon McKinney. And I'm your other host, Ruthann Fink. And today we have with us Caleb Canada. He is a Whitley County FFA member and the 2024 Kentucky FFA State Star in Agricultural Placement. That is a mouthful, but there is a lot to say about Caleb, but I want him to introduce himself and, and kind of tell his story. So Caleb, let's start at the beginning. Say hello and tell us how your FFA journey began. So uh, my name is uh, Caleb Canada. Uh, my FFA journey uh, started early uh, because my brother, uh, he's two years older than me and uh, was involved in the program. So I was always there at every event that he went to and went to competitions he went to. So it started pretty early for me and uh it's had a huge impact on me as a person the uh because before joining I was a uh, pretty quiet uh just kept to my friend group but uh FFA it, it's uh pushed me out of my co comfort zone um and it's exactly what I needed I started uh getting involved in activities and it forced me to open up and uh speak in front of others which I never thought I'd be comfortable doing but uh mm -hmm. through FFA I've learned how to communicate better uh, to help me gain leadership skills that I know will help me later in life. And uh, these, experience, these experiences have just made me uh, more confident and taught me how to work well with others. Oh, so. good. So tell us a little bit. You were your chapter president. What other events uh, did you yeah. maybe compete in and do? So uh, I'll start off with my favorite event, uh, land judging. Mm -hmm. So I competed in it. Uh, my freshman year uh, during COVID, so it was all online. Uh, we placed like uh, third in state, and then uh, nationals ended up getting canceled for that. But I was able to compete again uh, my junior year, and uh, we actually uh, won state, and uh, I somehow placed the uh, highest individual in that competition also, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we ended up going to nationals that year and we placed six so that was pretty cool and uh getting to travel in Oklahoma doing different stuff uh yeah. was really neat but uh that was by far my favorite uh competition so Sheldon introduced you as our state star in agriculture placement and that is a mouthful so maybe for our listeners that are like what what is that what is the state star in ag placement and what does that mean it all starts with what you kind of mentioned earlier as an SAE and in the FFA world we know that stands for supervised agriculture experience um, which is really a hands-on opportunity for students to experience agriculture and this is really an extension of the classroom of what you guys are learning there um, SAEs can look a lot of different ways we all know that it could be some maybe a student wants to be an entrepreneur so they start a business on their own um, they're a producer in traditional agriculture, or they might work in the industry for a person, a farm, or a company, which is what you have done. That's what we call placement uh, in the FFA world. And so when students apply for their state FFA degree, th the best of each category is chosen, and you were chosen as the state star in ag placement, which is a huge honor. We would love for you to share with our listeners, how did your SAE journey begin? Um, and any anything else that you want to share about your journey to becoming a state star. All right, so uh, it started my sophomore year of high school. Uh, I just turned 16, got my driver's license, uh, and wanted to find a job. And at the time, uh, at the time, uh, Moonlight was hiring. Uh, the owner, Ann Bays, uh, she is a, a big supporter of the Whitley County uh, FFA chapter and uh, she always tries to hire uh, ag students from the program uh, for uh, the co-op job so we can leave school early. Uh, so she uh, contacted Brian Perut, my ag advisor, and was looking for uh, was looking for people and uh, he mentioned it to me and at the time I was jobless so I was like yeah why not we'll give it a shot. So I went in there, no prior, ex no prior experience, anything like that. Never skinned any type, never skinned any animal Just, before. Hold on, stop. What is Moonlight? Moonlight, uh, Moonlight Meat Processing is a uh, USDA and custom uh, meat processing 
facility. So we uh, process beef, hogs, lamb, uh, and then when in season, we do bear, deer, elk. Yeah. Have you cleaned a bear? I actually have this past weekend. I did uh, <laughs> three bear, actually. It, it was my first time. Uh, wow. But uh, yeah. So it started as a co-op job placement is how this really, yeah. the origin story of, of your SAE project. Once you got hired, like, how did this turn into you becoming the state star? How did it snowball into that? So, uh, so yeah, it started as a, a co-op job. And then I, I just stuck with it, stayed there, worked there my junior year and then my senior year. And then uh, Mr. Pruitt, my advisor, uh, it got time to start doing the state degree paper. And he's like, uh, I was looking at your stuff and you got, you know, you got a great application. Uh, you you want to tr uh, try and compete for state star? And I was like, yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. So uh, he put me in for that and it just all started from there. It was kind of like a last minute type ordeal, honestly. Yeah. Why don't so. you share with our listeners from the day that you started at Moonlight, the processing facility and from the, to now your job titles changed, right? That was a big part of all of this. Mm. How did that evolve? Starting off, I had, I had to start off by learning the regulations and, uh, the cuts of the meat because that's the pretty much the whole job mm -hmm. you got to know the cuts meat uh so i started off packing and uh doing uh doing paperwork uh and then from there as i progressed uh i learned more uh i i researched more did all i could and uh she started giving me uh more responsibilities uh as i grew as a worker and then from there I started uh, operating the saw, uh, learning how to actually cut down the animals. And then uh, we had some staff changes and we were short on the slaughter floor. So I went from processing to the slaughter floor, which was completely new to me because like I've, I've never uh, skinned out an animal or uh, gutted it. So learning all of that was new. So then she just started moving me everywhere. Uh, so as I progressed in each spot, uh, when I got back from uh, training, she uh, promoted me to a assistant plant manager, which was really cool uh, because uh, with that title, it you know uh, you have to be able to pretty much do everything in the store. Yeah, yeah. So you went from I knew nothing about this to you are. You can do every job in the facility. You are assistant plant manager and you lead a group of people when you're in there. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's why you're state star in placement. Caleb, you were not the average high school senior. Um, in high school, you just mentioned that you were at training. You, uh, we're going to feature this podcast on Veterans Day because you are active duty in the United States military right now and you began your service in between your junior and senior year of high school. I had never heard of anybody doing that before. So why don't you tell us how you're serving and what led you to that choice? My junior year, my brother enlisted and uh, he went off to training, uh, came back a completely different person. And I see, I seen how it changed him and I seen all the opportunities he had uh, within the Kentucky National Guard. Uh, so I, uh, I went to uh, his recruiter, you know, and was talking and I wanted to start early. And with the Kentucky Army National Guard, you can actually enlist as a junior in high school at 17. So uh, I got that all set up I, and I ended up enlisting and leaving between my junior and senior year and completing uh, basic training, which is 10 weeks. So I did that over the over the summer and came back and finished out my senior year of high school and then ended up going and completing my my uh, job training, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, everybody has their own reason for joining the military. 
And for me, my, my main reason was, you know, the, the great opportunities that the, the guard offers. And not only that, I just, I just wanted to, you know, uh, better myself, push myself to grow and, and serve. Uh, and the uh, Kentucky FFA, uh, being, in, being in FFA has really uh, pushed me to serving because mm -hmm. uh, we, we did a lot of community service and yeah. it, you know, it, it was a big motivator, just being able to not only serve, you know, uh, my country, but with, with the Kentucky Army National Guard, we also serve the state and the community. So I yeah, get to make a difference cool. here at home. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in common between the two and, and you really bridging that of this is what I enjoyed in FFA is how it grew me as a person. I want to continue to grow. You know, that's special. That's not something a, a lot of FFA members do. We did some research actually before this podcast just to see like how many do our of our FFA members in Kentucky go on to serve. And it's about 3%. Um, you know, that's not a huge number, but compared to like national statistics, only 1% of Americans go on to serve. Um, we're proud of those numbers that 3% of Kentucky FFA members choose this route. And it is great for a lot of people and sets you up for success in different ways. And you've kind of alluded to this career path you're on and how your service is helping you in that. So tell our listeners a little bit more. Um, how has your choice to serve really benefited you and your career path? And and how did FFA help with that? I had to pick a job when I enlisted. So I, I enlisted as a uh, power generation specialist. Uh, so my job is working on generators and, you know, keeping them running and uh, making sure they're ready whenever. But uh, my overall goal is to uh, become an officer in the United States uh, military. So my, my plan was to enlist. And now that I'm at the college here at the University of the Cumberlands, I'm in the ROTC program. So now I'm, I'm not really uh, uh, doing my job. I'm a, cadet, I'm a cadet now. So at my drills one week in a month, uh, I'm stepping more into a uh, leadership role, getting to shadow other Army lieutenants uh, at my unit. So I'm learning from them, you know, uh, seeing what it takes to lead and uh, getting a feel uh, to, for how to apply those skills myself. So uh, relating it back to uh, Kentucky FFA, it's, it, you know, it's it. The FFA has helped me grow as a leader. And so coming into the military, I have those leadership qualities that I've gained from the FFA. So it's really helped benefit me through that. And now with my ROTC mil military uh, leadership class here at UC, uh, you know, I'm gaining more qu uh, qualities of uh, leadership. So Caleb, tell us, you do you have scholarship money when you're in the guard? How, do, how are you going to school? Okay, so... Uh, yeah, with the guard, one of the great benefits of the guard is the the state TA, so which uh, the state tuition. So I get a hundred percent of uh, my college uh, paid for, which is pretty nice. And then I get the the GI bill, which is and the kicker, which is additional money I get a month. So, uh, what are you studying? I'm studying accounting and finance. And then I'm minoring in uh, military science. Okay. So in 10 years, Caleb, what are, if I, all your dreams come true, what are you going to be doing? In 10 years, if all my dreams come true, I'm going to be a CPA and have my own accounting firm and be a commissioned officer in the Kentucky Army National Guard. Yeah. Well, how did your experience working at Moonlight Meat Processing, how does that kind of shape you know, this path? How has it shown you, this is what I really like to do? What are you taking with you from this experience? Even if this isn't your career in animal processing, what are you going to take with you from it? Well, that's a a trade I'll keep with me forever, you know. Uh, being able to skin and process animals, I, you'll get to take that with you. For, I'll know how to do that forever. And then not only that, uh, just being able to lead a group of people and uh, just the the trade and just being able to have in practice managing uh mm -hmm. running managing the business is pretty neat like uh I, 
at the at Moonlight, I also deal with like the money, like cashing out the register, uh, making deposits, just keep making sure everything adds up. So you had a lot of roles. And just from talking with you, I know you said like managing people, that was that was something you're going to take with you. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just from hearing you talk, it sounds like you're also you're just you've become a really adaptable person at Moonlight. You started you know, kind of entry level by the end of it, you're running the whole place. And so being able to just be flexible and and learn new skills and go home and do the research and learn what it takes and learn the regulations, that's nothing to snuff at really. That's a, that takes a lot of self-discipline. So we look forward to checking in in 10 years, seeing where you're going to be at uh, with all these experiences. (laughs) Kayla, we always end our episodes on growing Kentucky's leaders with the same three questions. The first one is what's just the best piece of leadership advice that you've ever been given? All right. So the best leadership advice I've ever received, it's always lead by example. It's something I try to live by, especially for my time in the military, because people aren't just going to follow your words, but they'll follow your actions. If you want respect and dedication, you have to show it first. Um, I've seen that when I put in the effort and work alongside others, uh, it motivates them to do the same. Uh, It's about being the kind of leader that you'd want to follow. That's great, Caleb. And you have gotten to see all kinds of different leaders and examples in leadership. And I know that I'm sure you stand out in, in your, in the guard. The next one is the opportunity for you to shout out somebody. You know, the Kentucky FFA Foundation with Philanthropy, it's all about giving back. People can give back in time, talent, treasure, all sorts of ways. Who is somebody who's poured a lot into you that you want to share? One person. You get one. <laughs> that one person, I, I'd have to give the shout out to my my ag advisor, uh, Brian Pruitt. Uh, you know, he's he's been a huge influence, always showing up and leading by example. Uh you know, he, he's taught me that leadership isn't about being in front. It's about being there for people and guiding them as they grow. So mm. he's had a huge impact on me. So, yeah. That's yeah, special. That's great. He's Our a good teachers one. are the best. Mm-hmm. Well, we talk about leadership a lot on here. We've talked about leadership a lot in this episode, too. And we know the best leaders are always trying to be better themselves. They're always learning uh, themselves and thinking, how can how can I be better tomorrow? So what is something that you're loving right now that's helping you grow more as a leader? Can be anything. Uh, one thing I'm loving right now is that that's helping me grow is uh, grow as a leader is my military leadership class here at the mm-hmm. at the Cumberlands. Uh, we're diving into the princip- the principles of military leadership uh, because, you know, it goes beyond giving orders. You know, it's about leading by example and showing accountability and, and earning trust. So uh, that's uh, my class. is one, It's really helping me grow. Well, Caleb, it has been so awesome to just get to know you over the summer a little bit. We've texted while you were in training. We had to do your star interview without coming to you. We did it all on Zoom because you were at training you're taking, you said you were taking 18 and a half hours a semester. You're still working. You're in the guard. You are, um, you're just a really great example. You're working so hard and it is, makes it easy to root for and to support students like you. Thank you for your service to our country. Um, you've inspired me for sure. Getting to meet you over this last few months. So thank you for, for that. What would you have? Do you have any last parting words for any FFA members who may be considering military service? Uh, Just don't give up. Stay motivated. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. You just got to stay motivated. You want to do the military? You just got to stay motivated. Don't give up. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, Caleb, thank you for being with us. And thank you all for joining on this episode of Growing Kentucky's Leaders. Growing Kentucky's Leaders is a podcast brought to you by the Kentucky FFA Foundation. Our music is performed by Bourbon County FFA member Joe Fritch. Artwork is by Julie Fritch Creative. Your hosts are Sheldon McKinney and Ruth Ann Fink, and you can find us on all social platforms at Kentucky FFA.